Hello. Hello. Coming to you from Crazy Corona Hair Town. Upcoming is the awesome video called How to Do Your Geometric Logo Project. Pardon all the ums and uhs and the false starts and the undos. Just showing you how it works. Okay, I'm just showing you what I think and how I do it. So I hope you're not bored. It takes about 100 years for me to explain these things. Have fun. See you later. So first thing you want to do is launch your Adobe Illustrator 2021 edition. You can see there you got the option of creating something new. I have gone to such a great deal of trouble for you that I have created a template, um, a geometric logo template. And the best thing to do when you have one of these is, well, first of all, for every project, you can see how I've got my class laid out here, CD010 Foundations, and then each uh, project has a little folder. So I highly advise organizing your folders and files on your computer so that you can find things easily. And when you're working with a template like this, you should download that from the internet, place it inside of your folder, and then open it. Don't try to just open it straight from the D2L window. So I'm going to double click on that baby or click on it and then hit open. And that will open up this lovely template. And the nice thing about templates is whenever you open them, you can see it comes up with no title. So you can save it as your own thing. Um, Let's start off, let's do that right away. So you don't, this is another way not to lose your files. As soon as you open something, create a name for it, save it. We're gonna call this one Geometric Logo. Maybe you wanna call it um, your name, Geometric Logo, whoops, Geometric Logo. And then it will save it it asks you what format do you want to save it in, Adobe Illustrator. We want to save it in that native file format. Remember, you want to um, always work on things as, as you're working along, work on it as an Adobe Illustrator file. Later on, if you want to export it as a PDF or an EPS, if you want to make your own little template, you can save it as an 8, A-I-T. Uh, but for now, you're just going to save it as an Adobe Illustrator file and put it in right away. Don't forget to do this little browser window. You can, you know, find your spot that you want to have. Spring 21, Foundations, Geometric Logo. That's my folder hierarchy. And I'm going to put it in there. Save. It also asks you some things. Do you want to make a PDF compatible file? Why not? All of this you can pretty much just go on. This is a, actually an interesting uh, point. You can save it to be compatible with all versions of Illustrator up until now, or if you know that you're gonna give it to your friend who only has Illustrator 3, the poor thing, you can save it back into an older file format, a legacy format. That's a fine detail, but for now, we're just gonna save it as an Illustrator 2020 file. I thought we were in 2021. Okay, so here's my little template. Let's see, the workspace that I want to be in is Essentials Classic. I've got my layer um, t uh, palette open. And layers, when you look down the tool palettes on your right-hand side, it's that image that looks like two little pieces of paper floating on each other. I love to keep my layers file. This is where I get into the crazy dragging. I, I drag my layers file out. And I like to keep it open because it helps me navigate what I'm doing as I'm working. And you can see here we've got two layers. We've got a layer with instructions, and then we have a layer with artwork. The layer with instructions would lock that because that's all the stuff down here. You don't want to um, accidentally start dragging these things around. And then you can create your own artwork onto this top layer. So layers, again, just helps you. Um, it's kind of like having a a clear piece of paper on top of another piece of paper. Each layer, as you go up in the palette window, whatever is on top of the palette window is on top, is the top layer, and then it goes down underneath, just like Photoshop and other applications you might have worked on. 
So naming and organizing layers, very important. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is place a my sketch. So number of different ways that you can do this, but I'm gonna go to File, Place, and then again, inside of my little folder here, I've got all kinds of jibby jobs, including my sketches. Um, here's one image, I forget which one I like the best. I think it's, it doesn't really matter, but I'll put this one in there for now. And now you can see when I go to place it, it's kind of stuck to my cursor. I'm just gonna drop it in there and whoa, that guy is really big. So you can zoom out. You can either do this manually, view, zoom out right there it reminds you that the key command is command minus so command minus 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 and you can see how big the sketch is and i'm just going to get on the corner of that and drag it down now in illustrator when you drag the corner you can see here you can distort things in photoshop they've they've reversed these key commands so i'm going to undo um so if you just grab the corner and drag it, you don't know that you're dragging it in proportion and things could get distorted, which, you know, you might need some time. But to keep the, everything sort of locked down, you want to hold down the shift button while you're dragging. It prevents me from distorting it all. It drags it in proportion. It just shrinks it down and keeps the same proportions. Oh, that's the crazy one. I, I love to draw type, so I think I might have over, gone overboard and I realized I liked this one a lot, but then I realized that it was not just using circle squares and triangles and rectangles, it was using quarter circles. So that's too complicated. Okay, forget that one. <laughs> and you might have multiple sketches too that you wanna look at or drag them all in or whatever. So again, file, place, and I want the other one, which is 9931, I guess, version two. There we go. Ooh, that noise that I just make is gonna be cuckoo. Once again, holding down my shift key so that I can retain the proportion. So this guy, this and lemon here is just made out of more simpler components. More simpler? Simpler components. Being, I got your squares, you got your triangles, you got your rectangles. Okay, so you can see there, oh look, I made a new little file. When I dragged that in, it came into the artwork file. And actually what I wanna do is I wanna make that a tracing, sort of like a tracing paper template too. I wanna sort of place that underneath my artwork and be able to go over the top of it. So in layers, I'm gonna go up to the three little hamburger symbol and open that up, come on. And um, there's a bunch of different things I can do, but I'm gonna actually make this a template layer. Boom, and you can see what that does. It sort of gradates it and it also locks it right away. I can't draw on that layer anymore and that layer is pale, it's, it's grayed out. And in the layers you can see that's made, uh, the word artwork has now become italicized and it's locked, so. I'm gonna add a new layer. Now we're in a three layer document. And this is where I'm gonna actually make my, my illustrator work. Um, I positioned that, okay, I'm gonna actually bring this, I think I'm gonna just do the word lemon. So I'm gonna unlock my little template, move it up here again so that I can focus on the word lemon because that's five letters. I'd like you to have a word that's at least five letters. If your nickname is, you know, MJ or something, then um, maybe you wanna say MJ Hart. <laughs> I don't know, something. Make a word that's got at least five letters in it, whether it's your name or not. If your name is, you know, Stephanie Borzellino or something really long, you can make it 27 layers. You can, there's no upward limit. There's just a minimum limit of letters. And my name fits that perfectly. I'm zooming in again. I, the other way to zoom in, there's a little zoom tool, Z. And actually, if I hit Z on my keyboard, let's see, if I hit Z on my keyboard, it just turns my cursor into a magnifying glass and I can zoom in. The other thing is on my computer, I'm using a trackpad and if I do the two finger, you know, spread, I can, I can, um, 
make my file, I can zoom in and out. So I can pinch or spread. Uh, another helpful key command is if I hit my space bar, my cursor turns into a hand and I can grab and move my file around however I want it. So now I want to exit out of that zoom tool. I don't want to be in there anymore. I'm going to go back to my home base. Remember V. Now I've just got the cursor. Okay, so I've got this little layout here of my geometric name and I'm going to start off by making some boxes, some rectangles. So I go to my shape rectangle tool and uh, it was hidden there for a minute because the polygon tool was open and all the drop down, you know, fly out windows. You can make rectangles, circles and polygons and stars and flares. So I'm going to hold my shift key down so that my square is a perfect square. I'm dragging it out and I've got the default here of a white fill and a black stroke. I want my fill to be transparent. I can see the drawing underneath it. Let the stroke be black. Maybe you want your stroke. Sometimes it helps when you're drawing. Distinguish it from the background. You could make your stroke red or something, even just for the, for the temporary. Um, you might be ready yet to pick your color of your actual logo. And if I want to here, I can, you know, adjust my size a little bit. It looks like a little bit too big. Whatevs. So there's my, my basic format. And I want all of my letters to be set within a square. So I'm just going to option drag that puppy and make multiples of him. And because I've got my smart guides on, you can see when I when it's lined up, it gives you that okay, I am lined up vertically. And I'll show you another thing. We're gonna space these letters out. So because of my smart guides, I can tell that they're all lined up. I also am a big fan of using guidelines. to be able to have rulers showing. If you don't have rulers showing, go to view, go down to rulers and show rulers. The key command for rulers is command R. That's easy to turn them on and off. Bing, boom, bing, boom, bing, boom. Once a ruler is open, I can just jump up into that ruler land and I can pull down, click and hold and drag, and it gives me a guideline. Guidelines are really useful for lining things up. That's why they're called guidelines. So if I want to make sure that all of these letters are lined up, and right now it's, you know, a little confusing because I can see the template through it. So easy peasy, I can turn off that template layer. I can make it invisible. Just to double check, those look really nicely lined up. And then toggle my visibility back on. So the layers panel lets you turn on and off visibility and turn on and off locking. And um, that's another one of those, I'm a, I'm a nervous hand worker. My hands are very fidgety, so I'm all, always like toggling, 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 looking at things. Um, also, so if I wanna really make triple, make sure that those things are all lined up, I'm selecting them all. I'm selecting all of my squares that I made by drag with my selection tool I dragged over all of those shapes and now I can go up here that you've got this handy align symbols along the top of your uh, options bar also if they're missing if you can't see them you can go to object align and this gives you the different options you can align things horizontally sometimes I have to think through these do I want it to be aligned left if I do that it's gonna look they're all gonna pile on top of each other undo. Here, I'll turn off my visibility. Um, so there's different ways you can align. What we want to do is uh, vertically align. It doesn't matter the tops, the bottoms, or the centers. They're all the same. So if I align all the tops vertically, so that means I'm lining up the tops of all the squares are going to be lined up. If, if I click that, if they had been out, of, let's make them out of line. So if, if somebody had been out of place here, uh, if these guys were wonky, 
and I selected them all, and I went vert uh, align, vertical align top, boom shakalaka, they're all lined up. And then the other thing I want to do is, the nice thing is I hardly ever go into that object align drop down menu because Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator gives you these beautiful little icons in your options bar. So we can again, horizontally align. You can see we align things along the left edge, center them, align them along the right edge, drop them down from the top, align their centers, drop them, align them up in the bottom. And then the next set of tools here is the distribute tools. So what I want to do is if you hover over these, it should tell you the name. If I click on that tool, oh, there you can see the little fly out label, horizontal distribute center. So horizontally, Along the horizontal axis, I'm going to distribute all these items evenly based on their centers. So, again, that just makes an equal distance between everything. Let me turn my artwork template back on. And I'm going to move them back down where they belong. And I'm also going to move this. If I move, even now, if I've got them overlapping um, and I do that horizontal distribute thing again, it'll distribute them with regard to the first and last object. So it's even more perfect than my drawing. I was pretty dead on in my drawing, must say. All right. That was a lot of tools just to get a bunch of squares lined up, but I'm telling you everything that I do, literally every thought that crosses my mind out. So I'm just gonna make a series of decisions here. There is my stroke for the L. Let's start making things some colors. I think I'm gonna fill that. Well, right now I'm just gonna leave it empty until I get everything. I don't, I don't know which shapes I want in the front and which one I want in the back. I gotta make a triangle, so I'm gonna click on that rectangle tool and drop down to polygon. Click to make a polygon with three sides, commonly known as a triangle. Boom! And now that I have this little triangle, we can start to get more familiar with how our um, direct selection tool works. I'm going to click away from it and then click on it and grab the corner, one corner anchor, put that right where my drawing is, grab this other corner anchor, put it there. And again, I've got my smart tool, smart guides on it. It tells me everything. It's like, you are aligned. Those paths are on top of each other. Quick, turn off the template again to see how it's looking. It's just like I imagined it. Okay. Similar kinds of process. I'm going to make some rectangles here for my E. Um, also, when you're designing letter forms, one of the key things when doing an alphabet is consistency. So instead of making a new stroke for my E, I'm just going to option drag the one I already made for the L over. What else needs it? My N needs a couple of those. Vertical stroke. So my E needed one. My N need one, I, I kind of even made one up in the O. So all those guys are now the identical same. I'm working on my E here. I want things to line up a little better. I'm going to zoom in even more. How close can you zoom? Sometimes when you zoom in really close, you realize something that seems aligned is not really aligned. So. which again is just how I imagined it. And while I'm working on my E, I want all my horizontal strokes to be the same, so I'm just gonna duplicate by option dragging. Remember the other way to duplicate is Command C and then Command V and that will paste in the center of your screen. Looks kinda cool. And my M, I believe I need some more triangles. So I got this one triangle made dragging that guy and then what I did was flip him so here's how you flip something you can go up to object transform and we want to reflect that is when you 
flip something like it's been, you know, in a mirror. It's reflected. And reflection gives you the option of horizontal reflection or vertical reflection. If you want it to reflect it vertically, it's nice that it shows you that, for example, floop. And I want to do it at a 90 degree angle. All right, yeah. And at the same time as reflecting it, I also want to copy it. If you have the preview turned on, you can see it shows me what the reflection is going to look like. That's nice. And I also want to copy that made. Um, I did two things at once. I reflected and I copied. Kind of like it like that. It's an M. It's recognizably an M. Drag that over there. I might have to do that zoom in, zoom in, zoom in because my stroke is looking a little wonky with my N. Um, this is a fine point of Illustrator. When you're working with a stroke, Illustrator gives you a couple different ones, so you can see that green line, remember the line in there shows me where the actual stroke is. Stroke window. The stroke palette is in your Essentials Classic over here. Stroke. I'm going to show the options. You can see that it gives me a couple different, well, multiple different ways to dress that backbone, that line that's in the center of the stroke, I can th put the weight of, of, the, of the line on top of it in different ways. The stroke can be aligned right now. You can tell that the stroke is aligned to the center of the line. Now that green line is on the outside of the stroke as, a, as opposed to being in the center. See, before it was on the center, and now it's on the outside. And this is this is called being really picky. This is what type designers do. They just tweak their little illustrator points all day long. Uh, I also want my diagonal line to go all the way over to the corner of the end. So um, when I'm cheating, that stroke is not exactly the same as the triangle there, but it looks good to my eye. Oops, did I forget my, I did, I forgot, I dragged my, I dragged my M away instead of copying it. So sometimes with Illustrator, when I started working in Illustrator, it was maddening because I felt like I was picking up things that I didn't want to pick up. So there's a couple different options. One thing I could do is grab all of these background squares, being careful not to select anything on the inside, and then I could just lock them. I could lock them down. And go to Object, Lock, the selection. Command 2. Now I don't have to worry about those background squares moving around now that I got them lined up so nicely. And if I want to grab my interior M, I can just grab him. The other way I could do it, if things weren't locked, things available to be selected, select all of the things, and then deselect the outside box. Adding, you hold down the shift key. When you're subtracting anything, you hold down the option key. So I selected all of the objects, and then I want to deselect the outside. So I hold down shift and I click on the outside. It's deselected. I don't know. Does that make sense to you? I don't know. Anyway, that's what I do. Only thing I have to do wowzers is make a circle for my O. Shift, I want, an, I want a symmetrical circle. So I'm holding down my shift, it up. I'm gonna zoom on in there. I'm gonna get up on close and personal with my O. O slightly go past my guidelines because visually when you see a circle, we kind of see it smaller than it is. Does that make any sense? I could even make my little O like, it could be like a shorter O like this. Why not? Okay, that's how I like it.
Boom. So I'm going to do a second version of my logo. Um, and I want to make it something a little bit more simple, but I kind of like some of the ideas I had. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to use my first initial this time. Um, I want some bigger, more solid shapes so that I can do the fill kind of things that we're asking you to do. So once again, I'm going to start off with a triangle polygon, and I'm going to stretch that fellow out like this. And oops, and I'm just going to use my two colors. That's what we we asked for is a two color um, version. Where's my swatches? Swatches. Okay, swatches. Stay put here. Stay in my. Here you go. All right, so I'm going to make my A my green color. Uh, this is going to be. I don't know, my first name, period, last name. I want to do the same thing, uh, drag some guidelines on here. Guides are visible. Um, you can always go to just view. Remember when you're looking for things, looking in the view or the window is the way to go. So my, in this one, I'm going to kind of to more of a traditional letter forms. Make the stroke for my L. I'm going to copy, drag. I'm going to rotate that same stroke so that it's the same width. But I think I'll make this the second color. So two different colors going on. And I'm using my left and right and up and down arrows. That's called nudging my selection. Um, again, I think the tricky thing with Illustrator sometimes is making sure that you've got the right thing selected, that you're not, you know, nudging everything. So practicing with that, like select everything and then shift, click again to deselect something, shift, click on that. Now I've just got this circle selected. So if you shift click, it deselects. Once again, once I've got my template for how the letters are going to more or less be, maybe I want to mix it up a little bit with a lowercase e this time, just to be weird and mix the upper and lower cases together. There's my two versions, one that's more lines and one that's more shapes. The shape one is going to work better for the next things that we have to do. I'm going to make my things that are green in here, I'm actually going to make blue because I want to show how the colors combine. So I'm just selecting everything that's green. I could also do this by selecting, going up to select same but I don't want to mess with that previous logo. Yes. I'm going to make a new color. I can just do it on my dial here. Ooh, that's pretty. Because now when I start mixing these two colors together in the next step, it'll be more interesting than just mixing together green and yellow. I'm going to option, drag the whole group, the whole selection, and now I'm going to change the opacity on these. Actually, as I, as I go through here, let me lock this first uh, logo. Now I'm going to lock my second logo. Object, lock, selection, Command-2. I can still work with this. This just prevents me again from like accidentally moving things around or changing things. So 
uh, now if I want to select the same fill color, it will just select the ones, the, the yellow shapes on the things that aren't locked on this one that I'm working on, which is exactly what I wanted to do. So trans, I think it's in transparency panel. Let's try this in transparency. Okay. Yeah, this is not in the properties panel. So in transparency, they have what's called different modes. Um, and right now I'm in a normal blending mode. These are blending modes. Um, they are in Photoshop too. You might be familiar with them there. It's a hugely helpful tool in Photoshop, but it's also very fun to play with in, in Illustrator. So the blend modes just uh, are different ways for one a color or an object that's on top of another object to affect it. So it's the combination of the two things. So you can do all these different things. What I want to do is multiply them because that sort of like adds those two colors together. So it's as if the blue was a paint and the yellow was a paint and I mix them together by multiplying. Um, but you can also look, let's go back. Um, if I want to try lightening them, it will lighten the difference between them. Sometimes it's very hard to predict what's going to happen. Color burn is weird. Depending on what colors you have selected and what, how they work together and what kind of an image it is. If you have a, you can do this with a photograph on top of something else, with a color on top of a photograph. You can play with all kinds of crazy, like this is the exclusion. I have no idea how it figured that out. Um, that's cool though. I like the primary color effect of that. Interesting. So I changed, I didn't, at first I changed the opacity setting. That's what the instructions say, but that did not satisfy me. So I went into transparency and used a different mode. Oh, uh, what would overlay look like? And I really, I like this, uh, what did I, what was it called? Exclusion. I use the exclusion mode. Who knows? You play and find a mode that makes you happy. You do you. Work in whatever mode you like. Um, now I'm going to option drag this combination of things. I'm going to lock my last version so that it doesn't get messed up. Um, okay, so now I want to kind of make that permanent. Right now the one blend mode is affecting the things underneath it. Instead of like letting the light shine through these crazy filters, I'm going to um, uh, flatten the transparency. Okay, object flatten transparency. So that means that everything that is there is going to sort of like become permanent. Like right now it's it's a little mathematical interaction, but now I just sort of, I don't know, I flattened everything. Um, and then I'm going to use this thing called Pathfinder and we're going to merge things. So your Pathfinder tool, you can use Pathfinder. We can expand it to see all of the, the different Pathfinders. And I oftentimes forget which thing. Some of these are very easy to see what happens. Um, so if you have, for example, you know, two overlapping paths and you want to merge them, it sort of joins them together. So there is, each one of these has a, has a name. There's unite, there's minus the front, there's intersect, there's exclude, there is divide, there's trim, there's merge, there's crop, outline and minus the back. We're going to try merge, which let's ungroup this. And what that does, oops, is each one of these is now its own little shape. So um, before, remember I had a circle with a square on top of it. Now I've got a circle, I've got this kooky wacky shape, and I've got that little yellow bit shape. And they're all individual items with their own. If I looked at them, this is an important tool. If I decided to view this whole piece of artwork as just outlines, sometimes this is a handy thing 
um, there's two modes in Illustrator. You can view using the CPU, meaning the central processing unit, and you can view the outlines. So outlines just shows you the pure shapes in Illustrator. And the difference here, you can see before I merged these things together, I had I'll have to unlock this. Um, I had a rectangle and a circle. And I had two overlapping triangles. Then I went through that little series of things. I, uh, I flattened everything, and then I used the merge tool. And that gave me a, instead of a circle and a rectangle, it gave me a circle and a, I don't know what this is, a, a Lego foot shape <laughs> and a wedge. Okay, and you're like, but Lemon, why do I even care? It looks the same. It totally looks the same when you're looking at the um, preview version. There's no difference between those guys, but oh, the structure is completely different. Now I have the capacity to make, to make some changes to every little item. Like before, I wouldn't have been able to change this little pink corner because it was just the result of the two things blending together, but now it's its own little square. Did I over explain that enough? If not, I'll over explain it some more. All right, option drag. What part of your brain is tuned off and I just sound like wah, 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 la, 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 blah, blah, blah. But really the words that I'm saying, I'm just trying to get the concept of what I'm doing across. Again, instead of just saying, push this button, push this button, push this button, I'm trying to explain how it kind of works in the background so that you can diagnose your own problems and, and make decisions even when you're not doing this exact exercise. Okay, so let's continue to lock everything that we're not using. And we want to do that select the same colors again. So let's select everything that is the weird turquoise green. So select, same, it could be the same appearance, which means all of the characteristics are the same. Um, that should do, or I could also just select the same fill color. So now you can see I've just got the green, green turquoise thing selected if I move them. And what I want to do is fill that whole area with one image. I'm going to fill it with a photograph. So to combine those things into one shape, I can't just group them. That would be nice, but I need to make them into one whole shape. It's like as if I'm cutting out a stencil and those are all the, the holes in the stencil and we're going to see something through it. So to do that, I'm going to go object, compound path, make. That means that all of those individual little illustrator paths are now one joint path. That's a crazy concept. And the second thing I'm going to do is drag a image in here, place an image into my file. We are in 10 foundations, geometric logo. There's my sky. I found a pretty, um, and I'm just plopping this in here. Once again, that's huge. Look at that crazy, I don't know what that was. Sunrise, sunset, something was happening. Um, so I'm gonna just scale that down till it's about the right width to, to go behind my whole word. Will it cover? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to I put it on top there. I'm going to get it, move it up so it's the, this little effect is happening somewhere in the middle. Um, and I'm going to arrange by sending that all the way to the back. And once again, I, I, okay, there's my selection. All right, that's all my blue things. So I've got all of those things selected. And what I'm gonna do is turn those shapes into a clipping mask. So this is really a, an important concept also. The, the 
most basic way this is used is if I wanted to just like crop this photo, I only wanted to show uh, that area of the photo for whatever reason, I would draw a square on top of it, however I wanted to crop the photo, and then I would select the square and the photo, both things, and I would go Object, Clipping Mask, Make, and it would crop the photo at the edge of that square. But that's not the only beautiful thing about Illustrator, is you can make your, instead of just cropping, you could use like a crop tool or something in Photoshop to do that. But in Illustrator, I can clip my mask to this, the crazy shape of the typefaces. Oops, okay, so I'm selecting them both. And now I'm gonna go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make, and boom, I just crop. You can still see when I hover over it, you can see the, the uh, shape of the linked photo there. You can see that X that shows you where the photo is. I might be able to slide that guy up or down. Click, click on this, and then I can go to Clipping Mask, Edit Contents, and it will let me shove. I'm doing this with my up and down arrow key shove things up and down. Where is that little glimmer in the sky? That's what I want to try to make that show. I think it's, I think it's coming into view. I don't know. Kind of a, there it is. See that little shooting star thing in my M? Maybe I want to, do I have enough space to put it in the O? No, it'll, it'll move. Yeah. Turns out my sky is kind of boring, except it's got that little shimmery thing. So there it is. And now for our last trick, we're going to duplicate once again. Option drag. I'm going to lock these people. Lock, whoops, lock the selection. And for your last little piece, we're going to make a compound shape again, and then fill it, instead of filling it with a, an image, we're gonna fill it with a pattern. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my outside pasteboard area here to create a pattern. And uh, maybe you wanna do it with, with lines or with a brush. Let's do it with a brush and use our, um, our brush tool. Last time, remember, we did a thing where we used uh, that charcoal -y brush. Uh, what other kind of brushes do we have? I added some brush library. What about what are artistic brushes? Oh, scroll pen, calligraphic. Oh, let's try calligraphic. Maybe I can make some kind of swooshy swashes. Um, brush like this. Oh, hmm. I'm not great with a track trackpad. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Okay, maybe I like that one. All right. All I'm doing is looking for something that I want to repeat and make a repeated pattern about. Um. I don't want to get too deep into pattern making because there's a several awesome tools in Illustrator that can help you make patterns. But this is the basic way. We can just go option drag. And then one interesting thing about Illustrator is whatever motion you just did, whatever transformation you just made, it remembers. And if you hit command D, it will do the same thing. So I just option dragged. If I would have like scaled it or something, anything that you do in, in that is part of the transform panel, whoops, is remembered and repeatable by option D. I mean command D. Command D, command D, command D. So now I've got this kind of ooh, I don't know, strange pattern that I made. Um, okay, so once again, I'm going to group all of those things together. I'm going to drag them behind my logo, arrange, send to back. And now I'm going to pick the yellow items in my logo. All my yellows.
the hell exactly this is going to work. And I'm going to pick my item that's in the background. I'm going to add a big background color of deep purple like that. I'm going to send that to the back. I'm going to group the pattern and the purple together, making one big group of that. Join the, um, the yellows as a, make them a compound path. Same fill color. So I've selected all my yellows. I skipped this step. I have to make an object compound path first. Remember, I had to make that into one big thing. Now, if I also select the background, and now if I make the clipping mask, it will see through all of those. Uh, all Everything that was yellow is now striped. And what we have here is a very 1980s slash maybe early 90s groovy logo. If you need to repeat anything or listen to this again, you can. I'm also going to attach notes in here of everything I did. And have fun. Have a great day. See you later. Bye.